Good morning and welcome to this Easter service of worship. We're glad that you're here. Welcome and we hope that you will come back again often. Be sure to sign the attendance pads and let us know of your presence today, especially if you're visiting with us. We want to extend a welcome to you later this week and we want you to know how glad we are to have you here at St. Luke. As you uh, sign those, let me just highlight just a couple of announcements. A lot of the, everything's listed in your bulletin, so please take note of all the great things that are happening in the life of our church in the weeks ahead. Just wanted to call your attention to our COPE event under the missions moment. Uh, we're at two weeks from today, we're going to have a special event in the ministry center, and this will be an experiential event teaching us what it's like to live in extreme poverty. And so I invite you to come be a part of that. There is a QR code there, so you can scan that QR code and it'll tell you more about this. And also, uh, I think you can sign up. It's a free event, but we want to uh, kind of have a count of who all's coming. So be sure to take note of that. Two weeks from today at two o'clock in the ministry center, it should be a, a really powerful experience as we learn more about being the presence of Christ in the community around us. So uh, lots of things happening in the life of our church. I won't call out all of them, but just take note of all the great things happening. There is a Easter greeting in your order of worship, so I invite you now to join with me as we call ourselves 
into worship. Rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad. Rejoice and be glad. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Please turn in your hymnals to number 302. 302, we'll sing the first four stanzas of Christ the Lord is risen today, and you're invited to stand as we sing together. If you would, please rejoin, join with me in our affirmation of faith. It will be a responsive reading this morning as printed in your bulletin. So please join me uh, in response in the bold print. This is the good news which we have received, in which we stand, and by which we are saved. Christ has died for our sins, was buried, was raised on the third day, and appeared first to the women and to Peter and the Twelve, and then to many faithful witnesses. We believe Jesus is the Christ, the Anointed One of God, the firstborn of all creation, the firstborn from the dead, in whom all things hold together, in whom the fullness of God was pleased to dwell by the power of the Spirit. Christ is the head of the body, the church, and by the blood of the cross, reconciles all things to God.
Wow, that was fantastic. <laughs> I think my words are going to very much fall short and pale in comparison to that. But since I feel like they just took us to the throne of God, let us bow our heads and continue at his throne of grace. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, we celebrate today the gift of the risen Savior. Lord, for all that that has meant throughout the course of history and for all that means for us today, we give you thanks. Lord, we thank you that the story, literally and in every way, lives on. And we celebrate today the gift that has been given, the love and grace that has been demonstrated, and the life and the hope available to all. So, Lord, we love and thank you for this Easter Sunday, this Resurrection Day. Lord, for we are an Easter people. And this is who we are. And this is why we do what we do. But, Lord, we are Easter people, not just on one Sunday a year, but all the year through. So, Lord, continue to live on in and through us. Lord, let us be vessels for you to extend your love and grace to the people and places and spaces where we go and find ourselves. Lord, lead us in the places that you would have us to go. Bring across our paths the people you would have us to connect with. And Lord, all of this and so much more, spoken and unspoken, we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. This time, I'd like to invite the children to come forward as Miss Nicole has a couple things she'd like to share with you this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Easter. Good morning, happy Easter. So happy to see you all. Hey, come here. You have your spot. Your normal spot. <laughs> Good morning. I'm really happy to see you all. Did anyone have candy this morning? Did anyone have any of these this morning ready for them? Yes, yes. yes. Well, this is not like the basket that my children got this morning. This one's a little different. These eggs are a little different. So we're gonna open them together. Reese, would you mind open this? and Let's see what's inside. What is that? That's right, it's a cross. Okay, this reminds us of the cross that Jesus carried all the way to the place where they crucified him. And he did that for me, right? Will you put that back up? Here, put it back in there for me. Betsy, will you do one? Be careful with this one, okay? Let's see. What's in there, Betsy? Show everybody. A nail. And now, this nail is in here to remind us that after Jesus got there, what happened? They, right, they nailed his hands, but were they little nails like that? No. no. They, were they were huge nails in his hands, and he did that for you. And he did that for you, right? All right, put that up. Let's see. 
All right, Chandler, what's in this one? Oh, wrong one. Haha. <laughs> How about this one? Try that one. <laughs> I know what it's I know what it's for. I think it's for the tin. <gasps> That's right. The rock shape was over the over the little rock. It was, it's to represent the tomb, right? After Jesus died, they put him in a tomb. That's right, a giant rock. It took several people to get that rock in place. No one person could move it. It was huge, and it blocked the entrance to the tomb. And when they went on Sunday Easter morning to the tomb, what did they find, Sally? Nothing. Show everybody what's inside. Nothing. nothing. Why was nothing there? Well, because Jesus has risen. That's right, because Jesus has risen. All right, we're going to say a prayer and go together to Children's Church. Dear God, thank you so much for Easter, Lord. We are in awe and so grateful for you, God, that you died for our sins, for me and all my friends and all our friends in here. Lord, we can never thank you enough. Thank you for the miracle of Easter. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Please turn in your hymnals to number 310. 310. simply and aptly titled, He Lives. And you're invited to stand as we sing together.
Lord, we thank you that you indeed live. And Lord, that you can and offer and willingly come and live in our hearts. So Lord, as we express our joy today in so many different ways through worship, Lord, let us continue to do so as we worship with our tithes and offerings. And Lord, as you so often did during the course of your ministry, take what is given, bless it, and use it that your kingdom may be known far and wide. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
If you will, join me now in our prayer for illumination that you find in your order of worship. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. And our scripture for today is from John's Gospel, John chapter 20, verses 11 through 18. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and she saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken away my Lord, she said, and I do not know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and she saw Jesus. He was standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you're looking for? Thinking that he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you put him, and I will go and get him. And Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him, and she cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. And Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them that I am ascending to my Father and to your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with this great news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of God for the people of God, and we say, thanks be to God. You may be seated. And let us pray. O oh God of light and life, we thank you for your living word. We thank you for its power to connect us to these stories, these miraculous stories of our faith. And God, we pray once again that you would bring your word to life for us and in us and through us, that we might be your vessels of light in the world today. We thank you, we praise you, and we give all honor and glory to you, our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, Mrs. Dunn loved her church. Mrs. Dunn was a faithful member of her church. She was there every Sunday. She was there every Wednesday. She loved everything about her church. She was there anytime the doors were open. Well, on Easter Sunday, Mrs. Dunn was particularly excited to see that the church was packed and she was so excited to see many new faces, so she went and she sat down behind a new young family because she wanted to greet them after the service. Well, that day on Easter Sunday, the service went extra long. There was extra music. There were extra readings. There were extra prayers. The preacher went on and on and on. The service went way over an hour, but Mrs. Dunn loved every minute of it. She was so excited. They could have gone on for three hours. She didn't care. Well, when the service was over, Mrs. Dunn turned to greet this new family, and she said, Hello, I'm Gladys Dunn. <laughs> the man said, You and me both, lady, you and me both. <laughs> the bottom line today is, in Jesus Christ, we have a resurrection hope, and Easter is never done. A common scene that I encounter at funerals is that after the crowd has gone, there at the cemetery, usually there will be one or two family members who circle back to the casket. It happens time and time again. I watch as a family member walks up to the casket and places their hand on the casket. Or perhaps they lay a single rose on top of the casket. And I watch as they stand there 
tears pouring down their face, saying a final word of goodbye. Many of you have been right there. But can you imagine if you were in that situation and when you took your hands off the casket and you turned to walk away, your loved one was standing there? What would you feel if you saw your loved one standing there? I'm sure there would be excitement. There would be great joy. There would also be disbelief. Can this really be happening? I I must be seeing things. I think if any of us encountered that, we most likely would not only be filled with disbelief, we probably would not want to tell anyone for fear that they might think we were losing our minds. But that is precisely what happened on that Easter morning according to the Gospel of John. We've just read where Mary Magdalene was standing outside the tomb of her dear friend, Jesus. And John tells us that Mary Magdalene stood there crying, weeping, the loss of a loved one. She stood there remembering all the times that they had had together, saying a final word of goodbye. And as she turned to walk away from the tomb, Jesus was standing there. Imagine what went through her mind in that moment. Imagine all of the excitement, all of the doubt, everything coming together in that moment. And John doesn't tell us, but I imagine that she must have reached out and embraced Jesus. She must have rushed forward and hugged him because the scripture says that Jesus said, don't hold on to me, I've got somewhere else to go. Don't hold on to me because I am going to be with my Father. I'm going to be with your Father. I'm going to be with God. I will be ascending. I'll be leaving this earth. So don't hold on to me, but go and tell everybody what has happened here. Go and tell everybody what you have witnessed. And so Mary went to go and tell others that she had seen the Lord. Now, From that very account, from the very first Easter, people have been trying to say that this was all made up. Almost from day one, people have been saying, yeah, well, his followers just made that up. It was just a nice fairy tale ending to avoid embarrassment. He had been telling them that he would come back to life. He had been telling them that they would see him again, but they just made this up. Probably somebody took the body and hid it somewhere. From day one, people have been trying to dispel that this was reality. And I'm sure that for Mary and those other first believers, there was an element of unbelief. There was an element of doubt. We know that Thomas doubted for sure. So from the very beginning, there have been those trying to dispel this. And that's why John wants us to hear Mary saying, I have seen the Lord. That's why John wants to tell us that she held on to him. She could physically hug him and embrace him. He was standing there in flesh and blood. Jesus, the resurrected Christ, was alive forevermore. Now, it's interesting to me that people are willing to believe that a man named Jesus walked the earth. Most textbooks in school will mention a prophet, a a man who walked the earth. There are historical accounts of Jesus riding into Jerusalem. There are historical accounts of the Last Supper. We can go to the Holy Land today and visit the upper room where Jesus sat with the disciples having the Last Supper. There are historical accounts of his arrest, his trial, his crucifixion. You can go to the Holy Land today and see the rock where the cross stood. You can touch the rock where he was crucified. All of these historical facts are there So why would we not believe the rest of the story? If we're going to believe part of the story, we've got to embrace all 
of the story. And John wants us to know he stood in flesh and blood before his disciples. And the writers tell us he not only appeared to Mary Magdalene, he not only appeared to Peter, James, and John, he appeared to hundreds of other people, witnesses who saw the risen Christ. How could anyone not take this whole story into account? We are resurrection people. We serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that He is living no matter what any foes might say. Have you experienced the living Christ in your life? Is He alive? Is He real for you? If we don't accept the entire story, we might as well cut the lights off, blow the candles out, and go home. I really look like a fool if this is not all true because I've given my whole life to this. But if it is true, we have everything before us. If it is true, our resurrection hope is always in front of us. If it is true, then we are going on to eternal glory in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, people who would dispel this want to say that the reason this didn't happen is because there's still so much pain and suffering in the world. People want to say that, well, if Jesus really rose from the dead, then why are all these horrible things still happening in the world? Well, the truth of the gospel is that pain and suffering is a huge part of the Easter story. Pain and suffering was with Jesus all the way through. Jesus endured pain and suffering as he entered Jerusalem. He endured pain and suffering as he was tortured, as he was flogged. He endured pain and suffering on the cross for you and for me. The Scriptures tell us that Mary endured suffering as she stood weeping outside the tomb. The Scriptures go on to tell us that later on this resurrection day, before the disciples saw Jesus, they were locked away in a room out of fear and anxiety. Pain and suffering is a part of the Easter story. And for those of us who call on the name of Christ, we will endure pain and suffering as well because the way of the cross is not easy. The way of the cross was never intended to be easy. But the beautiful message of the Easter resurrection is that pain and suffering will never have the final word. That's our Easter hope. Yes, there will be pain and suffering, but they will not be the final word. As one pastor said, in our resurrection hope, the last thing is never, the the worst thing is never the last thing. In our resurrection hope, the worst thing is never the last thing. We have this resurrection hope available to us here and now. We can walk with the risen Christ in this earth, in this lifetime. We don't have to wait until eternity. We can begin to see His glory if we walk with Him today. The resurrection hope is available to us here and now. Several years ago at our church in Dublin, Georgia, some good friends of ours were uh, there and the man was awakened in the middle of the night with a phone call that his father had died. And so the man sat on the side of his bed hearing this news and he said he of course began to weep at the loss of his father. He sat there for a few moments thinking of all that his father meant to him, remembering all the great times they had had. Once he got himself together, he called his siblings to tell them what had happened. And so the man said he got himself together, he got dressed, he drove to the VA hospital there in Dublin where his father had passed away, and he said he walked down the long hallway, and he got to his father's room, and there was his father lying on his bed. He said again, the emotions just flooded over him, he began to weep as he looked at his father lying on the bed. He said he felt compelled to go over and just touch his father. And so he went over and he put his hand on his dad's leg. And he said that when he did, his father opened his eyes and said, what are you doing here? 
the VA hospital had called the wrong family. (laughs) And so every day, every year since then, that family has had a Lester celebration, a resurrection celebration. Every year they've celebrated Lester's renewal, his resurgence, his resurrection. And I tell you that to say this family has experienced what it's really like to have resurrection hope in this lifetime. We will all come to a place of final rest. We will all come to a day when our eyes are closed on this earth. But for those of us who believe in Jesus Christ, our eyes will be opened to eternal glory in the heavens with Jesus Christ. That resurrection hope is available to you and to me. And John says in his gospel, the hour is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice and they will come out into resurrection life. This resurrection hope is available to you and to me. And it has been accounted for in the Scriptures. We hear Mary saying, I have seen the Lord. We hear the the accounts of the disciples who walked beside Him. We have the accounts of Him appearing before the disciples in the upper room again that night. We have the account that Paul says, He appeared to hundreds of others and He appeared even to me. We have all of these accounts that yes, Jesus is alive. But even if we don't believe these accounts, let us hear a modern day account. A lady in a church out in Kansas had a death experience. She died on the operating table. She died for several minutes, but they were able to revive her. She's alive today, and she goes around sharing her testimony, and her pastor loves to share her story. These are her words from that experience of dying on the operating table and being brought back to life. She says, I began to see everyone that I knew who had died. The crowd was standing on both sides of an entrance as far as I could see. Everyone was clapping and cheering and waving their arms for me. Many were jumping up and down. They were so glad to see me, and I was excited to see them, especially my parents. I cannot even describe the beauty of the river, the flowers, the trees beside the waters. There are no words except to say that it was beyond description. Beautiful, sweet, awesome. The atmosphere was so happy. Believe me, she says, this description is incredibly inadequate. But she says, as the doctors were reviving me, I remember wanting to cry out, No, please, let me stay. Let me stay. That is our resurrection hope. We're going on to something much greater. We're going on to a high, holy place where we will be reunited with those whom we have loved and lost. Most importantly, we're going on to a place where we will encounter Jesus for ourselves. He will stand, we will stand before Him. We will be able to embrace Him and look Him in the eyes once and for all, acknowledging You are the King of kings, the Lord of lords. All hail King Jesus. If that doesn't do it for you, then listen again to the words of Jesus Himself. As Jesus was preparing to leave this earth, He said, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in Me. In My Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, and I will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. Jesus himself telling us 
I'm going on to a better place. I'm going to be with my Father, and where I am, you can be also. Live and believe in me. And when your time on this earth comes to an end, I will be there to greet you and to welcome you into the completion of your resurrection hope. Have you experienced the risen Christ in your life? Is He alive and real for you today? We're going on to greater things. Let us bear witness to the light of Christ, our eternal resurrection hope. Let us pray. Almighty God, thank you for the miraculous resurrection power that we celebrate today. Thank you for these accounts of your resurrection. Thank you for the accounts that you lived and walked on the earth following your death. And Lord Jesus, we are here today because we believe that this is true. We want to believe. We want to bear witness. So, oh God, make yourself real and known to us here and now. May we bear your light in all that we do and say, and may your resurrection hope be ever before us, leading the way. We praise you, Lord Jesus, and we pray in your precious name. Amen. More excitement to come. Yes, our uh, benediction this morning will include a singing of Handel's Hallelujah Chorus. And this is an invitation to you. If anyone out there would like to come up and sing the Hallelujah Chorus with, with the choir, I'll speak loudly because, oh, you know when you're not sure if you're on a microphone or not, it's dangerous. <laughs> if you would like to come up and sing the Hallelujah Chorus with us, please come up after our final hymn and we'll, we'll fit you into the choir and we can conclude this wonderful celebration of the resurrection together. Now, if you will please turn in your hymnals to number 322, 322, up from the grave he arose, and you're invited to stand as we sing together.
Amen. Hallelujah. Christ arose. Now we prepare to hear the hallelujah chorus and let us go forth today with a hallelujah on our hearts, our minds, and our lips. Praise God. If you want to come and sing, please come on up as we join together. Oh, thank you. I'll take one. Oh, I got to get my glasses. Come on, Doyle. <laughs> 